from the cutting edge of anomaly research, you are about to experience the evidence with your host, 3D pioneer and image analyst with Mars X 3D, D.W. Gannett. Cat box. No, I'm, I'm not talking about a litter box, but if you're an observant person or a cat lover, you might have noticed how when you place a box anywhere there is a cat, the first thing they do is climb into it. Now it can be a fancy box like a carpeted igloo or it can just be the lid off a cardboard box. But they instinctively climb into that box and feel comfortable and safe. How about our own cat boxes? We all have them. Places where we feel comfortable and safe. Well, I hope you're learning to be comfortable with this channel and safe about the subjects we cover. But for many of us, it still means stepping out of our cat box and looking at a wider world. This is your buddy Dave over at Mars X3D. And you know, if you're viewing this channel and you don't know X3D, well, you're kind of missing the whole point and you're missing a whole lot. You see, X3D is your new superpower. And all you have to do is look below and click on the link and you can learn it. Most people learn it in two minutes or so. If you've been with me a while and you're comfortable with X3D, you might discover how much easier it is each time you do it. And how you can, my friend, relax into each image comfortably and completely. And as you become more aware how natural it is to see in this new way, you will enjoy it more and more. I promise. We're working on getting a new ISP so we can do a live hang. The ISP we have now is too slow, but that's going to get fixed. I'm really looking forward to interacting in real time with each of you interested enough to join me. It'll happen soon. We have a wide selection of goodies this week, so let's jump right in. Let's jump right into Neville Thompson's GMAC of 2963. Even in the context view, you can see this weird wedge sitting on the edge of the debris field. I'm not sure what to make of this. Could it be a rock? <laughs> of course it could. But the really regular shape, you know, the right angles, that tube-like bit running at a diagonal on the front left corner, the markings on the face, and don't forget those tubes down in the right hand corner. Is that really just geology? When we go to hyperzoom, well I, I still don't know. Does any of this make sense to you? I almost didn't include this one because it seems pretty borderline to me. You know one crystal clear high res shot would answer just a whole bunch of questions. But then you have to ask yourself, why in the world would NASA bother to put a high-res camera on a bazillion dollar science mission when it can get by with something from Walmart? One of the neat things about the mast cam is that you can cobble up a decent stereo image if you know what you're doing. It usually doesn't work too well. You'll see an example of that coming up because the left image, which is on the right in X3D, is usually too low res to give decent viewing. But in a case like this, where both cameras are focused on terrain that's both close and well lit by sunlight, that sometimes works. See that circle inside the green target? That's what we're after. Now I didn't mess with any of the stereo planes. What you see dimensionally 
is exactly what the cameras recorded. That knob or face at the 12 o'clock position. For those of you intent on discovering miniature Martians, it looks like it's floating out in front of where it should be. But that's what the cameras registered. If we allow pareidolia to sway our thinking, that larger knob in the middle looks rather like a surprised Mr. Bill. I used to love the Mr. Bill show back when Saturday Night Live was funny. My wife would get mad at me and tell me how sick I was to laugh at it. I already know I'm sick, so that never slowed me down. So, is this a petroglyph or just a freaky bit of erosion? I'd be interested to know what you think. Put it down in the comments. I'm always glad to hear from Phil Cox. He's one of those researchers who sends me some really interesting stuff every once in a while. You'll recall his cinder block wall with roots that made it into the final three picks in our best of 2020 video. And if you haven't already seen it, you might consider taking a look because it's jammed with goodies. Anyway, here's a stereo I cobbled together from the mast cams. And here's the same image with the shadows knocked back so we can see what's in them a little better. What we're interested in right now are the two items inside the box and the one tucked under the boulder that the arrow's pointing at. I'll flash those two pointy things so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Is it possible these are ancient stone tools, badly eroded? I'm always curious when I find bilateral symmetry in anything. Of course, that happens in nature quite frequently, but often it points to intelligent agency in the right context. By the way, if you uncross your eyes, you can see the right image is really marginal. But isn't it interesting that when you're in X3D, how everything clears up, how your brain kind of fills in the gaps? Both of these are quite even in shape. And the one on the right, especially, has the look of a spear point, at least to my eyes. Now, this next image is badly pixelated both from being extracted from deep shadow and because of the magnification factor, but I still think it's worth taking a look. Let me flash it so you can zero in a bit better. In my opinion, this looks exactly like an animal's claw. More specifically, it reminds me of a velociraptor's claw, if you remember those hungry cow crunchers from Jurassic Park. Look how smooth and even that curve is on both sides, the fine point on the end. I understand that some will say, no, that's just a flat rock under the larger one and the shadow is giving it the appearance of being separate. And you know, you might be right. But in my opinion, that is simply not the case. That shadow is a space between the large rock and the claw. And stereoscopically, it shares the same plane as the claw, which in turn makes the claw a standalone object. If we're to believe the reports of people like Corey Good and Andy Basiago about being part of the 20 and back program to Mars, both maintain there are still carnivorous dinosaurs prowling the surface, and apparently they're to be avoided at all costs. Next up is another plate I ran across the other day. It's one of those anomalies that aren't really obvious until you make a close examination at high mag. Now, maybe this is just subjective contouring on my part, but let me flash it for you. See what I mean? 
Not only does this plate seem to have structure down the middle of it, I want to draw your attention to the lower right corner of the rock it's sitting under. See those two rings sticking out from underneath? Are they part of the plate, part of the rock, or are both joined together in some way? I mean, it looks like the rock, if that's what it is, is sitting on top of a square portion of the plate that sticks out from the main body. Here are a couple more I found this past year. There's this one from 1432. And this one from 1454. There are more as well, but I want to keep things moving. It looks like these items are part of the debris that rolled down this hill. The one on the left is kind of hard to see even when we get closer, but the ones in the box are pretty obvious. Now we're not going to do a close-up of the big black cube on the right, because in this context view you can clearly see that it is a cube that's seen better days, and getting close doesn't really reveal much more detail than what you see here. Here we go. See what I mean? It's kind of hard to see, so I'll flash it a bit. Let's do one of our famous inventories starting on the left. We have a rectangular box with two holes that looks like a wall socket. To the right of it is a thick conduit attaching to whatever that assembly is to the right of the conduit. The assembly itself is a jumble of shapes with two protruding spheres. Behind the assembly, a bar covered with various shapes slants up to the left and connects with a rectangular box. The box itself has two buttons or rivets and two what might be antennae or connectors with balls on top. You can see the back end of the box behind those and also see the recessed inner portion of the box visible from front to back. We won't go into the various small items scattered to the right and behind the box, but there they are if you feel like looking at them. Pretty strange, isn't it? <laughs> it gets stranger. Take a look at this. Just relax into your X3D viewing and check out all the tubes, fittings, and shapes here. These look like two mangled, corroded, and crushed machines that rolled down the hill and came to rest, sitting here and just moldering away for the last however many thousands of years. Let's wrap things up today with a couple of items I call industrial remnants. <laughs> you know I just free associate when I assign names to things. I, it helps me remember them later on if I'm searching for a particular image. Anyway, see how the piece inside the yellow target just sticks up, entirely different from everything around it? My first impression is that of a metallic machine part. It looks to be milled metal, full of non-fractal angles and, of course, that shine on the upper left that isn't typical of most rocks. What gets me is that orange bit at the bottom right. That color is actually there. It isn't an image artifact, as far as I can tell. I'd sure like to know what it is. Let's look at another one. It looks like the rover almost ran over the one inside the green target. See the wheel track? Why they didn't stop and photograph it with the Molly cam, I'll never know, but it's one more golden opportunity tossed aside in their quest for 
in quotes, real science. One close-up, crystal clear shot, would put all us weirdos into our places if it's a rock, or maybe validate everything we've been saying for years if it isn't, which is probably exactly why it was ignored. Now, come on, folks. This is metal, and it seems to be mechanical in nature. Honestly, if you found this on the beach, wouldn't you pick it up and maybe even take it home with you? Let your eyes run slowly from left to right, or right to left if you're from Iowa, and take in all the little details. This, in my opinion, is an amazing piece of evidence. Well, thanks for stopping by today, and by now, you may have noticed that uh, we have a Patreon account, and I'd like to ask you to please consider helping us keep this channel ad-free. Patrons will receive deep discounts on our merchandise as we develop a line, and uh, other little perks, which we'll get into at a later date. If you haven't already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscription, double tap the bell, and you'll be aware of everything we've got coming. <laughs> this is your buddy Dave, over at Mars X3D. Be well. <laughs>